Hello everybody, my name is Robies and welcome to a new episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. In this series, I compare events in a selected character's life within one of the Assassin's Creed games to the actual history the individual lived through. As always, we were of major story spoilers. For today's episode, we will be taking a look at the history of the British Marine officer, John Pitcairn. As is customary, I'll begin this episode by sharing with you his pre-game history, which will inform us on his background prior to AC3, then his in-game history, which we see depicted in the game, and lastly we will analyze the differences between what happens in the game to the real historical events of the individual's life. Starting with the pre-game history, John Pitcairn was born in 1722 in Dysart, Scotland to Reverend David Pitcairn and Catherine Pitcairn. Both of his parents' families were well connected and this aided John to gain a good education, which later led him to join the Royal Marines. Not much is known about John's early life other than the fact that he was the youngest surviving child of his parents. However, after joining the Marines, in reason that Dysart was a port town, it is recorded that John was soon commissioned as a lieutenant in Cornwall 7th Marines in 1746. Around this time, he married Elizabeth Dalrymple, and together they had six sons and four daughters. He was eventually promoted to the rank of captain in 1755, and in 1757 he left Europe and was sent to serve in Canada during the French and Indian War. It was in this period where his participation in Haytham's plans took place with an AC3, despite these depictions being fictionalized. In 1771, at the age of 48, he was made a major in the Chatham Division. In 1774, in reason of the unrest in the American colonies, Major Pitcairn, leading 600 Marines, arrived in Boston, Massachusetts to aid with the occupation. During this period of occupation, Pitcairn was considered by the population to be one of the more reasonable officers, as many others were known to show distaste towards the colonials. He was also well respected by his troops, as he was strict but fair, and managed to make his soldiers into a very effective military force. John is also noted to have organized events of the Bostonian population with the purpose of allowing them to exchange political views in a civilized manner in hopes of stopping any violence. It would technically be around this point where we first met John Pitcairn as Connor, however he was also depicted earlier in the game, prior to his further promotions, when playing as Haytham Kenway. Historically, when the order was given to destroy the rebel stores in Concord, John Pitcairn was second in command of the troops on April 19, 1775. Therefore, he was present when the famous shot heard around the world was fired and the American Revolution began during the battles of Lexington and Concord. Disperse, you damn rebels! Lay down your arms and disperse! After the fighting in Concord, John was returning to Boston with his troops when his horse was shot. Although he managed to escape safely, he lost his two decorated Scottish scroll butt pistols. These were recovered by the revolutionaries who gave them to the American officer, Israel Putnam, who kept them as a trophy throughout the rest of the war. Amazingly enough, this exact segment is represented in AC3 in the background, as you can acquire the pistols, which are referred to as the Pitcairn Putnam pistols, in reason that both of the military leaders actually owned them. During the Battle of Bunker Hill on June 17, 1775, Major Pitcairn was now placed in charge of a reserve of around 300 Marines, among them his son William. They landed at the south part of the Charlestown Peninsula. Despite high casualties, they continued to advance until the final assault, where they met some of their infantry who were being pushed back by the Colonials. Pitcairn urged his men forward and up the hill towards the American position, pushing aside the infantrymen. However, during this instance, Pitcairn was shot and fell back into the arms of his son, who cried that he had lost his father. It is believed by some historians that he was slain by the former slave Peter Salem, however this is not fully confirmed. Although he survived the shot and was brought back to Boston, he died a few hours later from his wounds. Evidently, this death was differently depicted in Assassin's Creed 3, where he died at the hands of Connor during the Battle of Bunker Hill while watching the fight. In summary, the differences between John Pitcairn's actual life and his representation in Assassin's Creed 3 were few. Firstly, despite his presence in the American continent during the French and Indian War, the entire sequence in which he joined forces with Haytham Kenway was fictionalized. Secondly, quite obviously, he was not actually a member of the Templar Order. Thirdly, during the battles of Lexington and Concord, he was not the head of the British position, but was instead second in command. Lastly, his death was not at the hands of the assassin Connor while behind his troops' lines, but was instead during a charge against the Americans when he was shot and fell into the arms of his son. Even with these changes, however, John Pitcairn's life was very well represented in Assassin's Creed 3, especially with the involvement of that interesting tidbit concerning his pistols, and during his death sequence with Connor, where his actual political intelligence became evident as he admitted that he had really been searching for a peaceful solution to end this escalating war. And with that final fact, we have finished another episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, I highly recommend you try one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future characters from any of the Assassin's Creed games that you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next historical episode.